Some Valley businesses have been busy exporting their goods, not just across the country, but also the world. Now, I never had an intention of like getting into this business. This, you know, my chosen career path, you know, I went to grad school for uh, Japanese studies. So that is actually, you know, what I was studying and that's what I had intended to get into that field. After moving back to the area from Seattle, Brian Vargo started working for an outdoor gear company before striking out on his own. Uh, thing of how this got started. What I had noticed was there were no companies that were working, uh, you know, or selling, I should say, to a distributor uh, like Equinox was that would sell things like, uh, you know, high-end products like titanium campware or pots and mugs. And, and so the company started, unlike most entrepreneurs or people that have like, you know, this great idea, they're, everybody's going to love this new product idea. Yeah. Um, for me, it was like there was an opportunity there. You know what I mean? Like, so the distributors, they wanted these kind of products. They wanted to be able to buy them. But the types of uh, manufacturers that sold those products, they were not willing to sell to a distributor. And so that was my end. Agricultural equipment manufacturer Pickwright sells some of their equipment overseas, including harvesters that weigh upwards of 26,000 pounds. I would say, I would say probably 10% of our parts business, 10, actually 10 to 15 of our parts business will be export. We've sent machines to Brazil, Argentina, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Spain, I believe, Portugal, to name a few. I first started to exhibit at a trade show called Outdoor Retailer, which uh, today is in Salt Lake, or I'm sorry, it's in Denver, used to be in Salt Lake City for years. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, go to the shows and you meet all kinds of buyers, buyers from all different countries. Yeah. That's, you know, so it's probably started with Japan and uh, we have a really good distributor in Germany as well. Um, you know, and these distributors I've been working with for many, many years now. And then those uh, companies, they then sell to, you know, retailers in their country. Yeah. Overseas international shipping is kind of a headache just with all the uh, red tape you have to deal with, all the paperwork and different things. You know, some countries need certain things where other countries it's no big deal. Um, you know, shipping Canada is no big deal. You right. know, that's, that's our brother, our sister up there. It's no right. big deal. But shipping Overseas, South America, anywhere, it's, it's a lot of red tape. Different it's just individual farmers, pretty much, that are buying uh, used harvesters is mm -hmm. generally what we get. We do occasionally sell new machines over there. Three or four years ago, uh, we sent three brand new harvesters over to Russia. Um, and then once they got there, we had one of our technicians go over, set everything up for them. That was a bigger like agricultural uh, conglomerate that bought those.